I mean, if you, uh, if you Google Glenn Burton, one of the first things you may find uh, is his association with something called the Green Revolution. Um, it was the 1960s, and social scientists had become really concerned that the world's population was outpacing our ability to produce food. There was actually very real concern, particularly in parts of Asia, that there were simply too many people to feed. And if we didn't do something dramatic, change the way we produce food and, or, or create food that's uh, easier to grow, that basically it would result in mass famine. And uh, Dr. Burton had developed a reputation for travel. One of the things he did was, uh, I think he traveled to over 50 countries uh, in his lifetime, which, you know, in the 1960s was, uh, international travel was not nearly as common as it is today, so he really was a, already a world traveler. And he began a process of looking at a, a crop called pearl millet. Uh, most people here in the United States probably aren't familiar with pearl millet because it's mostly used as a feed crop. It's a kind of grain crop, but it's used for uh, primarily for feed, for, for livestock and the like. But in other parts of the country, or excuse me, in other parts of the world, it's, uh, it's a very uh, highly regarded um, staple crop. This is something that people grow to, to eat. Um, and he was looking at varieties of pearl millet particularly that grew in and around areas uh, of India and, and parts of Africa. And he asked people if they would send him samples of pearl millet that they were growing there. And this is a long and arduous process. It took a lot of work on his part, but ultimately what he did is he created new varieties of pearl millet, which he then shared with people in these other countries. And they began to test them and to grow them and what they realized was that it would grow uh, exceptionally well. Uh, it would grow much faster and it would grow in areas that it wouldn't grow before. So he effectively expanded their opportunities for agriculture into zones that were previously too inhospitable. And there, there are statistics, I can't remember them off the top of my head, but in just a very few short years, you can see the amount of pearl millet that they produced grew by millions and millions and millions. And, uh, it, and now it, I think it's important to say that uh, Dr. Burton didn't do this alone. There were other scientists working on this problem as well. Uh, and they together are sort of clumped together uh, as a, a part of the Green Revolution. They, they, they helped revolutionize the way we produce uh, food in particular. And so other people, you know, Norman Borlaug, who is uh, uh, particularly famous for work on wheat. Uh, Dr. Borlaug found new ways to grow wheat, and that uh, had a similar result to the work that Dr. Burton had done on pearl millet. Um, it's one of the things that I, you know, there, hmm. I couldn't find many places where Dr. Burton commented on this work. Uh, one of the things that you'll learn about him very quickly if you do any serious inquiry into his life is that he was really very much a man of action. He loved research and he loved it more than anything else and he always wanted to have something new uh, to work on. Uh, he, I heard stories about him flying back on airplanes from long trips abroad and everybody else is exhausted, they're worried about being jet lagged and he's sitting at his seat jotting down notes for what he wants to do first thing in the morning and he had tasks for everybody to start. Um, this was, this really was his passion. His passion was science and research and it, it shows at just about every turn. So he was exceptionally passionate about science and research and you don't see a lot of editorializing or a lot of commentary from him. But I did find one quote uh, that was attributed to him uh, in which he said that, that, that helping to feed the people of the world was his greatest accomplishment because he had seen them, he had traveled to their homes, and he figured out that he could help them somehow. And I think he regarded that as his greatest legacy. Um, but no, I think Dr. Burton saw uh, the impact of his work. He saw people who were suffering um, and he saw the potential for famine and misery and he came to realize that his research uh, helped prevent that um, and no, no question that was one of his greatest legacies and I think he, I think he recognized that.
I think it's important to note that his accomplishments didn't go unnoticed. Um, he's won, he, uh, Dr. Burton won uh, God knows how many awards. Uh, if you look at his uh, bio, the, the list just goes on and on and on. But I think probably chief among them was the National Medal of Science. Uh, that was in 1982. Uh, and he was given the award by uh, uh, then President uh, Ronald Reagan. The, I can't remember the exact words of the citation uh, for the award, but um, he was given the award for helping to feed the people of the world and also for improving uh, the lives of, of hobbyists and recreationists, people who like to play golf and that sort of thing. So they sort of recognized both, uh, both aspects of his research, which was nice. Uh, there was the, his work on pearl millet uh, and uh, you know, efforts to help feed the hungry, but then uh, they didn't ignore the, the other important parts of his life. Uh, and, and his work on turf grass was exceptionally important. And it wasn't just for recreation. Keep in mind, he, he helped revolutionize agriculture in the Southeast through his work on turf grass. And uh, we're still seeing the, uh, um, the benefits of his work today. A lot of farmers still use that grass to, to raise their cattle. Um, so. I, I, I hesitate to say that that was his crowning achievement because it's, it's difficult to say someone like that, uh, you know, someone who's lived such a, an incredible, uh, long and productive life, that that was the best. But I think amongst his many awards, that was uh, certainly one of the finest.